Good morning, one and all. Today we will start with our lecture number 8, part 1. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the central limit theorem and error function and complementary error function for the discrete random variable and continuous random variable. First, session outline today's lecture to the central limit theorem. So, what is the basic purpose of central limit theorem? The central limit theorem is used to analyze the noise in digital communication. Suppose you define three probability density function. First one is Gaussian function, which consists of n number of samples. Second one is squad Gaussian function. And third one, the random variable distribution function. Like this. So this is a x1 random variable. This is probability of random probability and this is function x2 x3. So if you consider there is a samples which is consist of n number of samples from here taken from these samples. If I want to plot this to analyze the noise in the each of these, so any distribution is converted into a Gaussian distribution, then we can analyze the noise in digital communication. So first this central limit theorem state that the any distribution which is to be it may be Gaussian, it may be squad distribution or it may be your random distribution. It converted into a standard Gaussian distribution. So that purpose, so this theorem taken a number of samples. Suppose there is a sample x1, x2, these are the samples which are taken from x1 is equal to the probability density function of x1 of f of x. Similarly, for this is the probability density function of x1 random variable. Similarly, here is the number of sample in this Gaussian distribution. So we can take a number of samples. The number of samples which is to be taken from the collection of these samples are sample space is equal to Sn which is denoted by n number of sample space x1 comma x2 comma x3 up to xn these are the samples which are taken up so sum of sample space is equal to x1 plus x2 plus x3 up to xn these are the sample space samples of x1 x1 and x1 x2 x3 up to xn and these samples x1 x2 up to xn these are independent each of each other and identical to each other so they are equally and they are equally equal these are independent first now the sum of these random variables in sample space so that is equal to x1, x2, x3 up to xn. Now to calculate the mean expected value of here sample space or n sample space. So what was the formula? So formula is to calculate the expectation 
e OS. A layer is for me by the calculated for the n number of sample space is to be calculated by simply P of SN. So it is calculated the average value for the given samples x1, x2 plus x3 of 2xn, which are independently each other. These samples, each sample is independent of each other, which have equal probability. So Px1 plus Px2 plus Px3 up to Pxn. So this is the expected value each sample from the n sample space. So which are mu mu to mu up to mu. So this is the Sample value. So expected value for n sample space is to be calculated n. Mm -hmm. So number of samples to be present in SN sample is n. So mu is equal to n mu. So this is the equation number one. We can see that. Now similarly, when we calculate the expected value for this n number of sample space which is consist of x1 to xn similarly we calculate the variance variance of n sample space variance of sn that is variance of each individual sample Variance x1, x2 plus x3, xn. So from this, we calculate the variance of n samples, which is consist of x1, x2 up to xn. And these are the even the variance of x1 plus variance of x2 up to plus variance of xn. So these are the independent and they are equal probable. So variance are equal to sigma square one, sigma square two for up to sigma square up to n samples. So variance for n samples space SN that is equal to n into sigma square. And these samples from the n are independent. So covariance of x1 x2 up to xn these are the zero covariance between two variants are zero because they are independent of each other so covariance is zero now we use the Gaussian distribution so that is to calculate the in discrete format normal distribution sn that is the your summation xr is equal to yes no that is normal solution then you comma then sigma square so this is the your that is normal distribution in terms of any probability which is to be calculated. Now to calculate the array of random variable which is denoted by capital letter X bar.
So, average value of random variables. Average value of random variables. That is given by.
that is x bar in terms of the mean and variance. So that is summation and for the mean that is x squared. Yeah. Which is also given normal distribution. Yeah, stand for the normal distribution. Mu sigma square divided by mu. So this is the the Gaussian distribution function. It is to be map any distribution. So here Gaussian distribution error. Okay. Now. Here, yen is the normal distribution, yen is the normal distribution, and mu is a mean, mu is a mean, and sigma is a variance, sigma is a variance. So, whenever the variance number of sample space in any distribution will be taken and which is converted into your Gaussian standard Gaussian distribution that time the width of a that distribution will be decreasing suppose we draw a different Distribution. Whenever we should come out this distribution to analysis the noise of any distribution that is to be converted into a perfect Gaussian distribution. So there is a Gaussian distribution which is a perfect one. So that is the 
first case to calculate the error function. This is for continuous random variable. For we can say it is a standard format to calculate the error function of any random variable. Now to calculate the complementary error function for discrete algorithm your continuous random variable. So complementary error function is the complement of your first equation. So E R F C which is the C stand for your complementary error function that is given by just change the limit from x to infinity so 2 upon under root pi square root of pi from infinity x to infinity e minus y square root so this is a formula to calculate the complementary error function or discrete as well as continuous random variable. So in this lecture we have studied about the central limit theorem as well as the error function for the complementary as well as the complementary error function for the continuous and discrete random variable. These two equations are very important in the point of view gate exam. So we can stop here. Thank you.